time sound, I invite all who can to stand and to take your bulletins as we begin our worship service.
paper is on here today. And uh, as we hear that and watch, we'll also receive the flags from Ethan and Reese.
Landers Field has been recorded by some young people on the video. You can follow the words in the bullet. Can we stand for the royal anthem?
Please be seated. Thanks again to Bruce for coming back and helping us with trumpet. We always appreciate your music. Again, gathered below me are shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child. These go to help poor children around the world to uh, not just enjoy Christmas with gifts, but there's actually a great Christian outreach attached to it where they get plugged into a church in their community. And uh, so, like millions, millions of lives have been transformed by us giving a shoebox at this Christmas time. So I encourage you to participate, either physically bring one here by next Sunday, that's their that deadline, or you can do it online. You go to Samaritan's Purse and you follow the links, click, click, and uh, they'll build a, a box for you and send it to the country you want. Uh, if you do that, some have and told me, we would like to know that because we're going to include that in our totals at the end of how many our church could provide. Now, there's one meeting to take note of if you're on the advisory committee. That's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Wednesday at 7. I invite you to pray aloud with me this prayer of confession, or silently if you prefer. Almighty God, we have taught you and others to get our own way. Lord, have mercy. We have not loved you with all our hearts, souls, minds, or strength. Christ, have mercy. Please forgive our sins and the sins of others done to us. Lord, have mercy. Heal our hurts and set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord assures us He will do that. As 1 John 1, 9 says, when we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and remove all righteousness from us. Praise the Lord. Let's hear from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. This is the message which Isaiah, son of Amos, received in a vision about Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be set over all other mountains raised high above the hills. All the nations will stream towards it. And many peoples will go and say, Let's go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For God's instruction comes from Zion. The word of the Lord comes from Jerusalem. And he, the Lord, will judge between the nations as an arbiter among the peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer lift up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. The word of the Lord. And in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 34. Apostle Paul says to the Corinthian church, The tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread, 
And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It follows that anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of offending the body and blood of the Lord. So everyone must test himself before eating from the bread and drinking of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment on himself if he does not discern the Lord's body. That's why many of you are feeble and sick, and even some of you have died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not fall under God's judgment. When we do fall under God's judgment, it's because he's disciplining us to save us from being condemned with the rest of the world. So, my friends, when you meet for this meal, wait for one another. Don't rush in. If you're hungry, eat at home first, so that when you meet together, you won't fall under God's judgment. There are other matters I will settle when I come in person. Also, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Caitlin's away today, and I'm going to spend a few moments now with the children, and I'll need your eyeballs looking this way because I have a couple things to show you. pictures on it. Can anyone guess what it is? A, a Bible? Good guess, but it's not a Bible. What's your guess, Maya? Um, a thing full of papers? No. Any other guesses? <laughs> You're over the age of... <laughs> And that's right, people over the age of know what this is, even though there's no word on it. A photo album. Do you have one in your home? A photo album? You open it and there are photos? Yeah? Why would we want a photo album? Reese? Um, so you could remember um, your family? To remember. The people who are in the photo album. Can't you remember them all in your head anyways? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes not. I go through my photo album. Now this is the one I made of uh, all pictures of my mom. My mom's name is Barb. But she died back in February. And since then I've gone through all my other photo albums and pulled out the ones where there's mom and me out picking blueberries. I'd forgotten about that because I was only about eight. There's mom and me swimming, mom and me whitewater rafting, mom and me at a concert, my mom sticking a tongue out at me. <laughs> she liked to do a lot of silly things. So I have a lot of memories of her up here, but these help. So we can remember things we've forgotten about. All those photos on your phone or camera, are you going to be able to remember them? Are you going to scroll through all of them? I like good old photo albums where you can see what happened in the past and remember in case you forgot. Now, Those are pictures of my mom, Barb. 
I hold in my hand two pictures of Jesus. We just read about them in 1 Corinthians 11. Do you remember what the two pictures we have to remember Jesus are? The bread, or this is a wafer, it's like bread. And what does that help us remember about him? His body, which was broken or tortured on the cross. And then what would be in this cup? Another picture of Jesus, please. Um, it would be um, Jesus' blood. Yeah, a picture of it, right? Yeah. We don't actually have his body or actually have his blood, but we have a picture. We have juice or some people use wine. Yeah. Nobody took an actual picture of him, did they? Because they didn't have cameras. If you see a picture of Jesus hanging on a wall or in a Bible, it's somebody who imagined it, made it up. But we don't know what he actually looks like physically. Here's what we do know. He gave his body, and he let mean people kill him to the point where all of his blood drained out. He did that for us, how much he loves us. So whenever you see bread and juice this week, I hope you'll go, oh, there's Jesus. That's a picture of him and what he did because he loves us. We have these so we'll remember him, never forget his sacrifice on the cross. That's why we're having communion today. And today you guys get to stay in to observe that and learn about it. And if your parents allow, to actually take part in it. To receive the communion elements for yourself if you already believe in Jesus. Jesus taught us a prayer. So again, we will always know what to pray whenever we're in trouble. Prayer to make the start the day or end the day. We want to pray it together. We call it the Lord's Prayer. And we can pray it now out loud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Canadian comic, Norm MacDonald, that tells the story of his uncle Jim, who uh, had become very forgetful in his old age. And so he went to the doctor to get some memory pills. He'd been taking them for a week or so, and he and his wife are sitting in their backyard, and the neighbor Hank comes over to the fence and says, uh, Jim, could you loan me your pruning shears? I can't find mine. I forget where I put them. Goes and gets them, loans them, says, sure enough, neighbor. By the way, if you find yourself a little forgetful, you should go to your doctor like I did and ask for some memory pills. And he uh, says, oh, that's a good idea. They work? Oh, they work like a charm. Well, what are they called? Uh, <laughs> what are they called? The flower. Um, What's the name of that flower that guys sometimes wear as a boutonniere? Uh, tulip? No, no, not a tulip. The kind that, you know, you can get a year round. Oh, a carnation. No, it's not a carnation. 
It, it's the red one, you know, that for love and stuff. Oh, you mean a rose? Yeah. Say rose? What's the name of the Mary pills my doctor prescribed? <laughs> you find yourself that way? You got a good forgetter? Yeah. One lady doesn't, named Rebecca, in Brisbane, Australia. Saw this on the news, how she can remember everything that has happened to her since the age of one week old. Everything she said and heard and eaten and smelled and done. And I was skeptical by it. Checked it out. And sure enough, she is one of 60 people in the world diagnosed with what they call highly superior autobiographical memory, age sin. It means she can remember everything. It's like having a photographic memory times a thousand. Would you like that? Some days I would. I'm constantly forgetting where I put my keys and wallet. Uh, once I was filling out the car, getting gas, and I put the wallet on the roof of the car to fill up and pay for it, and I drove away with the wallet on the roof of the car. Uh, Lisa, seeing how often this happened, decided she'd get me a big wallet, like the size of a woman's clutch, for my birthday. You can't miss it, right? Oh yeah, I can. I regularly forget it too. Uh, so it'd be nice to have highly superior autobiographical memory sometimes. But other times? No, Rebecca actually describes the pros and the cons of her condition. She wishes she could forget painful events in her past, but she can't. Her parents tell her, just forget about that time you were sleeping over at a friend's house and you went to bed accidentally. Let it go. But she can't. She remembers what was said, the smell, the shame, everything. And it still bothers her. She says she loses a lot of sleep because her mind is always remembering. Today we're choosing to remember something that happened 2,000 years ago, a death. As well as remembering the deaths that happened two years ago, and 20 years ago, and 75 years ago. A day where we focus on death? Isn't that something we should forget about? I mean, death's a negative, right? Put it out of our memory. No. The front of our bulletin says it right. Lest we forget. We don't want to forget because Jesus says, do this to remember me. The command is, remember me. When you get together, take bread and wine to remember me. Remember what I went through for you. And all four Gospels are very graphic about how Jesus died. He didn't die in old age. He didn't die from cancer or a car accident like most people do. He died the worst kind of death he could back then, called crucifixion. Nailed to a cross, though he committed no crime. He wasn't guilty of anything. They tried to find a legal charge against him, and, and they bribed two men to make up stories against Jesus, but they couldn't even get their story straight because they were liars. And then when Jesus is on trial, the judge Pilate says three times, He's innocent. He's innocent. I find no fault with him. Why do you want to kill him? But still, they cried, crucify him. So, we know very clearly how Jesus died, and we're to remember that, those facts. 
But more than that, we're to remember why he died. Why he died. Like I said, it wasn't because he was a criminal deserving of it. Then why? Well, Jesus says, here's my body broken for who? For you. And, and here's my blood shed for you. So he died for you and for me. He voluntarily gave up his life. He said, go ahead and you crucify me so that you and you and you and you can be forgiven of your sin, washed clean forever. Isaiah 53 says, he took our punishment on the cross, the punishment we deserve. Because Romans 6, the wages of sin is death. Those who sin deserve to die. That's us. Jesus said, but I don't want you to die for your sin. Let me take it for you. That's why he died. Some blame the Romans. Pilate didn't want the, the revolt to happen or he might lose his job. So to keep the peace, he put Jesus to death. Some blame the Jews. They were jealous of Jesus. They were all following Jesus instead of their leaders. So let's get rid of him. Let's kill him. No more competition. I don't blame the Romans or the Jews. I blame this guy. Mike Retti and his billions of sins is why Jesus died. So when you see an empty cross, you see another picture to remind you of how much Jesus loves you. So much he would die for you. Whether you're a lonely housewife, proud teenager, a crooked politician, a confused young man, a drug addicted thief, it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. He died so you could be free from your sin. Every person we meet, that should be how we view them. You're someone Jesus died for. He loves you so much, he would give up his life for you. Because that's the truth. Why did Jesus give us pictures, bread and wine? Because he knows how often we forget, how good forgetters we have. What do you do to help yourself remember things? Anybody write post-it notes and put them on the mirror, the fridge, the computer screen? A lady tied a string around her finger. And people would ask her, why do you got a string around your finger? She said, oh, that's to remind me to floss my teeth tonight. Mm. All right. Some of us write it down and others of us set alarms. Even God, I found this interesting, Genesis 9, gave himself a picture so he would remember something. Now, God never forgets, but he still gave himself a picture so he would remember a promise he made to us. And here's what it is. A sign of my promise that I make between me and you for all generations is the rainbow. I have set my rainbow in the cloud to remember my promise to never again flood the earth and destroy all people. Every time God sees a rainbow that he made, he says, oh yeah, I'm never going to flood the earth again because of sin. Even God needs pictures to help remember. So why are we wearing, oh, where did my poppy go? It fell right. It fell? It fell right there. Okay, I'll get it after. Well, why are you wearing a poppy? And you, and you. Why are we doing that today and this week? Yeah? To remember the soldiers who died for us. We need pictures to help us remember. 
When you drive on Veterans Memorial Parkway, notice the green signs that say the street name, but you know what's also painted on that sign? A red poppy. So year round, we'll remember here in Brantford, oh yeah, millions of men and women died so I could live in a good free country of Canada. lest we forget. We need pictures. And so that's why we're taking bread and juice today, as Jesus told us to, to remember him. Now I don't know that he had in mind to remember him the way we do it, where we have a, a ceremony, you see a, a nice fancy cup, and a wafer, and we do it once a month. Other churches have communion every three months. Some have it every Sunday. But I don't think he meant for us to do it so formally in a church building with a minister all the time. You know what I think he meant for us? Is whenever we have bread and juice or bread and wine, to remember his love for us, that he would die on the cross for us. At home, tomorrow you have uh, toast and juice for breakfast. That's a moment to just say, thank you, Jesus. You, you love me so much, you died for me. You, you have supper at the table as a couple or family, and there are dinner rolls, and maybe a bottle of wine. You see that and you go, thank you, Jesus. You love me enough to die in my place. And I think he wanted us to remember that often daily when we eat and drink at home because the early church, it says in Acts, did it. They met in people's homes daily for snacks and meals. And I think whenever the bread was passed and the wine was passed, those were the two most popular things to eat and drink. They had a moment to stop and pray and thank Jesus for his death. Remember him, not just once a month at communion, every day of your life. Now here's my last thing for us to remember. When Jesus says, remember me, he's making it very simple and very pointed. We're to remember him. Yes, remember how he died. Yes, remember why he died. That's important. But even more important is remember him, Jesus the man, sent from God to save us. It's a personal command. Every day, you know me, bring me back to your memory. Let me be the first love in your life. Now, we can't remember someone we never met or don't know, right? If I said, let's have 20 minutes now to remember Julius Caesar, you'd say, how? I don't know him, I've never met him. Oh, someone might on your phone call out the Wikipedia entry and read us some facts, okay. But do you know him? No. I have in my office an old chair, 100 years old, from my grandpa Neil. He was a United Church pastor in Nova Scotia. Now, I have never met him because he died before I was born. So I can't say I know my grandpa Neil. I'll sometimes sit in his chair because that's where he wrote sermons and I'll try and feel his inspiration. No. I've heard stories about him. I've read some things he wrote, but I can't say I know him. So if you say to me, remember your grandpa Neil, I'm like I say, sorry. I can't. And so when Jesus says, remember me, he's first of all asking, do you know me? Have you met me? Have you invited me into your life by faith? 
And we can all do that. We can all know him when we say, Jesus, come into my life. Save me from my sins. Be my Lord. And when that happens, you know him, though you don't yet see him with your eyes. I said I don't know my grandpa Neil, I can't remember him, but my mom Barb, I can remember her like. Because I've known her for 54 years. I don't even need that photo album, it's just fun to look at, but I can remember. So the command today, remember me. How? Bread, wine, and an empty cross. Those are the pictures by which we remember him. The hymn we're going to hear is called Ferris Lord Jesus, and you can follow the words in your bullet.
see-through plastic, which exposes the wafer. Get that ready. Then also a uh, warning that when you pull back the second tab, the purple one, to expose the juice, if you're squeezing it while you pull that tab, you're going to spill. And so don't do that over your clothes. Put it to the side, you know, in case that happens. Now we declare our common faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I invite all here who have put their faith in him unto salvation to now come to this communion table and receive the elements for your spiritual strengthening. You don't have to be a member of this Harrington church. There's not an age requirement. It's do you love the Lord Jesus and are trusting in him? Then he welcomes you to this table. Let's pray. It is our constant duty that we should, at all times and in all places, Thank you, our Holy Lord, God the Father, the Almighty, the everlasting God who created the heavens and earth and all that are in them, who also created us in your own image, and whose tender mercies are over all your works. So now with the angels and archangels and the company of heaven above, we here worship and adore your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. As the Lord Jesus took very common elements of bread and wine on that night when she was betrayed, transformed them into pictures of love. So now I take the same common elements of bread and wine be used for God's glory and holy mystery. Let's give glory to Jesus, the Lamb of God, together. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. As we heard in 1 Corinthians 11, that night Jesus was betrayed, he first of all took bread. When he had given thanks,
thanks to God, he broke it and said to his followers, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the Lord's body. Thank the Lord for that. Now here's our friend and benediction. Mm -hmm. 